In this video, I'm going to show you how you can track success or error messages that pop up on the browser of the user with the help of Google Tag Manager. All the more coming up. Hey there, and welcome back to another video of Measure School, teaching you the tech tools and tactics of today's digital marketing world. Now, my name is Julian, and today we want to take a look at another Google Tag Manager tracking method to actually pick up if there is a error or success message visible on the screen itself. Now, we do this all with a new built-in trigger called the Element Visibility Trigger. And we'll go through an example where we have a form submit that afterwards shows a error or success message. Now we've got lots to cover, so let's dive in. All right, back in our demo shop, we have a contact form here that when we fill it out, will produce a success message down here. Notice that the site doesn't reload, so this is dynamically inserted via JavaScript, and we want to track whether a success message was transferred or this just failed. So when I click send here, we get these fields right here, but also a new message saying that there was an error. So how would we track this with Google Tag Manager? Luckily, we have a new trigger available within the interface, which is the visibility trigger. So if you go here to new triggers and choose our trigger type, we can see our element visibility trigger. So we click on that and we get some of the configurations that we need to undertake in order to make this all work. The most important thing being the selectors right here. What this trigger will do is it will monitor our website and see if anything changes. And if we specified the right parameters for the right object, for the right element inside of our web page, then it will transfer some information to the data layer, which in turn can help us to fire our tag. Now to make this all work, we need to know a little bit of HTML and also how to select elements via CSS. So first step being really to look up how this is all marked up. So here is the element that we want to track. So we'll right click and go to inspect element. This will open up our developer tools. And in the elements console, we can see how our element that we want to track is marked up. So right here, we see our element and see that it is marked up with a class. And unfortunately, no ID. Now inside of the trigger, we have two methods of actually selecting this element. One is by ID, which we don't have available. And the second one, which is more flexible, but a little bit more complicated to set up is the CSS selector. So with the CSS selector, you need to know how to select this element via a CSS selector. Now we can try it out beforehand by going into the JavaScript console and typing in document dot query selector all and then in parentheses and quotation marks, you can input your CSS selector just to see what it returns and if you have selected the right element. So in our case here, we can look at this class and see there are three different classes. They're marked up like this. And we just need to input this CSS selector. So for example, validation error could be copied, go back to the console and put in a dot that will select the class and then our class that we have input here. I'll press enter and I get a return statement that shows me what element was selected by the CSS selector. Now important is, depending on what you want to track, that you are as specific as possible so you only monitor the elements that you actually want to later track. Otherwise, there could be unforeseen consequences if you would, for example, if you would have the wrong CSS selector with multiple different objects with multiple different elements in here. Now, the important thing to actually try out beforehand is when we reload this page, I'm going to press the up arrow as well to see whether you get a return statement with your CSS selector. Now, this actually indicates that the element on the initial page load is not present on the page and therefore it can't be monitored upon any kind of changes. So this wouldn't work as a CSS selector within Google Tag Manager. So let's make the message appear again, just by clicking on send here. Now we have it available, but this is again, something we can't use. So let's go back to our elements pane and see 
whether we can use another CSS selector, for example, this response output here as something that is possible with our CSS selector method. I'm going to press the up arrow here and replace this. We get a return statement right here. Only one is actually present. I'm going to reload the page so this message goes away. I'm going to try out the same CSS selector and we now see that even though it is not present on the page right now, it is there to be monitored. So once we get an error message, this class simply changes and gets a new class attached and therefore also it's done visible to the user. So we can use this as a CSS selector for our trigger. So let's go over to Google Tag Manager, enter exactly that same CSS selector that we tried out with the dot and then our class. And then we can choose if we want to fire this only once on a page, once per element. So if you have multiple elements on the page that we are monitoring, we are only monitoring one. And every time this actually appears on the screen, I would choose this option because we could have multiple wrong form submits or multiple successful form submits. So I want to fire this on every time it appears on the screen. Now we can choose a percentage, a minimum percentage that should be visible to the user when he submits the form. In our case, 50% should be okay. We can also specify a time. It should be on the screen in milliseconds. I don't think that's necessary for us. But what we want to check is the observe DOM changes. Now this will give you a little bit of a explanation here that it this might affect site performance. It also depends how many elements you are actively observing or monitoring on your website. And therefore, you should be aware that this might affect the site performance, not the page loading time, but the actual site performance when the user is already on the website. Now we are pretty safe here because we are only monitoring one event. And obviously we could also filter and only deploy this on pages that actually have a contact form on. So for example, the page path should contain um, contact two here. Let's put this in as well. And then give this whole a, a name. So this is the visibility trigger for form error or success message. Let's save this and enter our preview and debug mode. We don't have that yet attached to a tag, but we can already see if our trigger is working correctly and is picking up the right information from the page. So now we have our preview and debug mode here and we're just simply going to click on send. And we see our GTM element visibility actually happen in the event stream here. So this is actually pushing into the data layer and gets observed correctly. What if we send this off again? Again, we get our element visibility. What if we fill this out correctly and actually send off a message? Again, we get a element visibility. Now we can see the data layer information here and also see how it differs from a successful message and a error message that we receive. So of that, we can actually refine our trigger to only fire on successful or successful form submits or form submits that didn't go through. Uh, all we need is the element classes right here. Now the element classes would actually need to be in the variables as well. Now we can always use the click classes or one of the classes in the built-in variables because that will also get filled. So I'm just going to go into the built-in variables and go to click classes and activate this. Although we are not using the click trigger, refresh, go back to our page and refresh that as well. And now we are gonna first uh, get our error message. So here's our error message and let's put in our success message. All right. And we see now in the variables under click classes that we have here our mail sent okay and our validation errors. Now it really depends what kind of tag you want to attach this now to and what kind of tags you want to fire. I would like to fire a Google Analytics event tag into Google Analytics that would count the successful and 
error messages that I would get for this form. Now I could build different triggers based on the different filling of this click classes. So I could just put in another dimension here, click, just put, so I could just put in a, another condition here that the click class should contain um, error. And then I could fire one tag or the other tag, but to keep this maximum dynamic, I'm just gonna leave it as is and actually build a lookup table variable that will take our input. So let's go here to user defined. This will be a lookup table variable that will look at the click classes. And if it's this response here, then I want to turn this into an error. And if it's this response here, I want to turn this into a success message. Give this all a name. Let's quickly try this out. Refresh, refresh here and send this off. And we can see in our variables that our click classes was filled with an error and therefore our lookup success or error lookup table should turn into an error. So I've just basically rewritten our click classes into this lookup table. And this is something I can now use in a Google Analytics tag. So let's go over to tags here, build a Google Analytics event tag for our form success or error message. We'll go with a universal analytics tag and send off an event that has the category form submit and as an action, our lookup success or error variable. Now I just need to specify the tracking ID, which you can always find in your admin section of Google Analytics. And we should be all good to go. Let's attach our trigger, save this, save this as well. Let's reload our page and let's set off an error message. We see our GTM visibility files into the data layer. We have our Google Analytics event firing. And when we go into Google Analytics, we should be able to see this in the real time reporting under events. We have here our form submit and we see our error. Now let's go back to our page. We load our page here. Let's fill out this form again with a successful form submit. And we have our event fired. So now we should get our success form submit right here as well. So this has fired and we can now then see whether somebody has successfully or um, with an error submitted this form. We can also then see this later on in the behavior under the event reports right here. This should show up, but this will take at least half an hour till we get any kind of data into these reports. Now to spin this to the end, you would need to go into Google Tag Manager and submit this as a version. So it'd be published on your website for all your users to be tracked. And this is how you install error or success message tracking on your website with the help of Google Tag Manager. All right, so there you have it. This is how you can track a form as well, but also these error and success messages that sometimes pop up when the user takes an interaction. And if you want to track that and also fire a tag upon that, it doesn't have to be a Google Analytics event tag. It could also be a Facebook pixel or an AdWords conversion tag. Then I hope this tutorial was helpful and you were able to follow along. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below. And also subscribe to our channel right over there because we'll bring you new videos just like this one every week. Now, if you want to get your questions answered live, then hit that subscribe button right over there and also that bell notification icon so you get notified once we go live and there's where I can answer all your questions in the live video. Now, my name is Julian. Till next time.